The next thing we want to know when we're talking about variability is we might want to know if we have a value on a participant or value on a penguin in this case, we might want to know how unusual is that value relative to the other values. Um, and what we can do for that is we can calculate z-scores. And a z-score essentially allows us to convert variables um, to units of standard deviations. So it will allow us to say that this particular value is x number of standard deviations above the mean or x number of standard deviations below the mean. And to calculate this, the z-score, we take the value, that's what x is, x is our data value, we minus the sample mean, and we divide it by the sample standard deviation. And that will give us a z-score. And then this is, represents how atypical a value is for, our var for a variable, and it will allow us to compare scores across variables. Let's see how we would actually use this. So one of our chinstrap penguins, a female from the island of Dream, has a bill length of 58 millimeters and a body mass in units of grams of 3,700. We might want to know which value is more atypical of a chinstrap. Is it more atypical to be a a have a 58 millimeter bill length, or is it more atypical to have a 3,700 um, gram body mass? And when we're saying atypical here, we're thinking about the larger the z value is, the larger the z score the more atypical that value is. <clears throat> so let's calculate it. So the z for the bill, I said it's the data value, so it's going to be 58 minus the mean, which is 48.8, that value is coming from here, divided by the standard deviation, which is 3.34, and that's coming from here. And this is going to be 2.75 standard deviations. So what that's saying is that this female, her, her bill length is 2.75 standard deviations above the mean. So she has a very large bill relative to the other penguins. So now let's calculate her body mass. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take her value. And it's very important that you do things in the order of the formula. We're going to take the value, which was 3,700. We're going to subtract the mean, which is 3,700 or 3,733. And then we're going to divide by the standard deviation, which is 384. And that's going to give us a value of negative 0 0.09 standard deviations. And so these are the z-scores for the bill length and for the body mass for this particular female penguin. So we see that her body mass is uh, negative 0 0.09 standard deviations, which means that her body mass is 0 0.09 standard deviations below the mean. So she's above the mean by 2.75 standard deviations in bill length, and she's below the mean by 0 0.09 standard deviations in body mass. So the question now, which value is more atypical? Well, we're looking for the value that has the smallest absolute value, because that, I mean, no, uh, we're, in the case, we're looking for the more atypical, so we're looking for the value that, has the, that is largest in the absolute sense. So in the absolute sense, this value would be, for the bill length, it would be 2.75. If we took the absolute value of negative 0 0.09, that would be 0 0.09. So clearly, her bill length makes, is more atypical, is more unusual for a, a chinstrap penguin. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. <clears throat> but this is how we will typically use z-scores. It will allow us to compare values on two different variables. And you see how they both had different means and they both had different standard deviations. So we can't readily make that sort of a comparison to find out which was more unusual. We need to go through a z-score. <clears throat> so kind of a related topic is a percentile. So the, the pth percentile is the value of a quantitative variable so I got a typo there, which is greater than p percent of the data. So uh, if we go back to thinking about our female chin strap, remember she had a very large bill, 2.75 standard deviations above the mean. That would have actually put her in the 98.5th percentile for bill length. 
and her body mass, and remember she's below the mean, so we'd expect her body mass to be maybe below the 50th percentile, uh, she would be in the 47th percentile for the body mass. So what that means is that 98.5% of all chin strap penguins in the sample had bill lengths that were, that were smaller than her. And for the body mass, we're saying that 47% of all female, I mean, not all female, 47% of all chin strap penguins had uh, body mass below her, which also means that 53% had body mass greater than her, because these values have to sum up to 100. So a percentile kind of gives us another way to think about comparisons, and it really we could compare with a percentile rather than doing it through a z-score. <clears throat> so if we wanted to try to envision um, this again, we've got this distribution here of body mass again. And we wanted to say, well, what's the 50th percentile? Well, if it's if we're, if it's the way I've drawn it here, so that it's roughly symmetric, and and I, I know I keep going back and forth between just focusing on one species of penguin and all of them. This is on all species of penguins again that I had data on. Maybe the 50th percentile is about here. So what's that saying is about 50% of the data is below that, and then it's also saying that maybe. 50% of the data is above that, right? But we could also do other things. Maybe we want to be right here, right? Because we said before, if you go out um, two standard deviations, that middle part there will be about 95% of the data. Well, if we wanted to capture the middle 95%, that means we're essentially identifying the 2.75th percentile so that 2.75% of the data lives down here, and we're identifying the 97.5th percentile over here. Um, and I don't mean, I just mean the 2.5th. Okay, because if you take 100 and you minus, uh, I mean, if you take, a, uh, if, you, if you're calculating the middle 95%, that falls between these two values. It falls between the 2.5th and the 97.5th. If you add up the area of both of these two, they would sum up to 5%. And each individual tail would be 2.5%. So we've now sort of accounted for all of our data here. So we can see that if we were to use that 95% rule, if we assumed our data was uh, roughly symmetric, that if we identified the middle 95%, we're also identifying the 2.5th and the 97.5th percentile. <clears throat> 